Yeah. How's things, Gary? <laughs> where, where are you? You're back home and you're uh, um, yeah. Yes, I'm uh, back in Bastam. Um, just waiting for one. Of, everybody's moving all over the place. Um, I've got a daughter coming back to, to Bastam. She should be here in about an hour, coming wow. back from Jakarta. Uh -huh. I've got a daughter who just went back to Jakarta uh, just a few days ago. Got uh, a wife and two other children sort of went off to central Java. Um, so, it, yeah, it's that time of the year where all the Indonesian lemmings sort of you know, run up and do their lemming things. So, um, yeah, so it, uh, yeah, it should be a, a quiet um, couple of um, weeks, hopefully. This is the end of Ramadan, so it's, it'll be true. Yeah. Did you did you have to rush back? I can't remember. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, well, I sold my boat. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, right. And uh, um, the, the payment went through to the agents in Singapore, and I'd specified and I'd send it to this account in Singapore. Uh, without realizing that the bank there had uh, suspended the account. Um, and so it couldn't be transferred. And so, well, just coincidentally, Singapore had just opened up for the first time in two years or something. Um, so I was able to go there and uh, I had to go immediately um, and uh, you know, go to the bank and reopen it. You, know, you actually had to front up the bank because, you know, Maybe they suspect I'm some sort of oligarch or you know, drug smuggler or something, I don't know. Yeah. But I had to front up in person to the bank in order to reactivate the account. So if I said that, then the money from the bank could go into that account. So yeah, a major, major hassle. Um, and a, 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 a very, very an exhausting trip. Um, well, not just because it's a, a long trip, and it's a, 13 hours flight time, but with all the connections, yeah, it, it, pro it probably was more than, I don't know, 30 hours traveling um, without any real sleep. So I was in a very good state by the time I got to Singapore. So. But uh, yeah, and luckily sort of, you know, landing back here, my, my jet lag doesn't seem to have been too bad. I'm really sort of adjusted, so which is a good thing. Yeah. So yeah, I'll probably be here for. Hmm, that's a good question. I should ask myself that. Um, I, I should be here for a little while, um, but the the question now is a toss up between staying here or going to Australia with my daughter who wants to go look at my other daughters in. In Melbourne, um, along with you know, all my medical issues, which still have not been resolved, so I, I may still be forced to get to go to Australia. Um, but you know, at least you know, I'm sort of going for more than just one reason this time. So, but yeah, the the the, the whole thing doesn't appeal to me at all. <laughs> but I, I I'm not sure there's going to be a lot of choice. So. So I'll have to see what happens. I'll have to see what happens. So, oh, all right. Um, the, the, the problem is that um, my one of my daughters in Melbourne, she, she actually took one of my other daughters. It gets complicated, doesn't it? Uh, uh, my, second, uh, my third, third eldest daughter stayed with my second eldest daughter for... This is really complicated. You know? <laughs> um, I've got two daughters in, in Melbourne that they're both Australians uh, and ethnic Australians, if you can call them that. Um, and I've got, hello, I'll have a cup of tea soon, thank you. <laughs> coffee. coffee. Oh, okay. Um, so, <laughs> oh, cheers. So, she, she, um, so my, my eldest Indonesian daughter sort of stayed with my second oldest daughter in Australia because she's got a house in, in Melbourne and uh, 
it was actually a really good arrangement. So she to get because she'd never been to Australia before, never been out of the cut out of Indonesia before, actually. So you know, there's going to be there was sort of that major issues of culture shock and adjustment and all that. Um, so it was really good that she could go straight to to to, to my other daughter um, Jessie in, in Australia and stay with her and uh, go through a period of cultural adjustment before. Uh, and he spent two years there studying. And that had been the intention with uh, my, my second oldest Indonesian daughter. But uh, my daughter in, in Australia, she, she's got a fairly, now has a fairly high level position in the, um, with the, I think it's with the Australian College of Surgeons as, as a policy director or something. Um, and uh, it, and she's basically had to turn a whole house over to a to an office just because she's had had to work from home more because of the pandemic. They've had some pretty severe lockdowns in Australia um, um, sometimes, and so now she we can't use that room anymore. And so I'm, I think the only the best solution for me is to um, to go with her, set her up in a house somewhere nearby. Um, and, uh, and and just get her going as far as you know adjusting uh, before I can then uh, come back. So that's sort of the plan. But, uh, what a yeah. sigh! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> so I, I, yeah, you I, girls yeah. up, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so there's so still another how many other children to go? Uh, another three. We've got to do the same thing. So, yeah. Mm. Oh, th I've been reading, which does remind me, I've been me meaning to mention it about uh, Schopenhauer um, and uh, Nietzsche, and a few other philosophers, always been really, really strong on never ever have children. And uh, you know, I'd really ha I'd wished I'd, I'd read them. You know, <laughs> you know oh, they're, they're nothing but but pain and heartbreak. <laughs> you know, you know I'll never have children. You know, I, I don't know if it's too it's too late for you, but <laughs> but you know, don't ever. You know, if it ever gets in your head, come see me. I'll talk to Adam. Okay. <laughs> How is your beautiful little son doing? <laughs> oh, okay. So you want to talk about heartbreak? So okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a, he's an absolutely lovely boy. Okay, he really is. I, I, you know, he's uh, he's on another planet, unfortunately. Um, you know, the 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 Asperger planet, I suspect. So you know, that that's going to be a challenge. And that's probably a, yet again another reason why you know, I'm sort of half thinking of setting up another base in Australia. That, is that there's just really nothing here. Um, he really does need help on on language. Um, sort of, well, my diagnosis, for what it's worth, is that he's nonverbal. Uh, you know, his, his communication skills, uh, well, he, he just doesn't like doing it. You know, you know, everything else is fine. He's, he's active, engaged with his own world, but you know, he's, he's cert certainly not behind in any intellectual sense. Uh, but certainly, in a, in a social and communicative sense, he's, uh, he's uh, got things which need to be addressed. So, uh, I think the only choice is to, yeah. Well, I haven't actually thought this through yet, but I'm sure have been half thinking that it might be better to try and get into Australia. That's really the only place I can really go. Going to going to Singapore, I don't think that's got, it's just not practical. Um, and of course, here it's completely and utterly pointless. There's, there's absolutely nothing that uh, uh, they could do here. Because there, there is, uh, there's been a thing they can teach kids. I've been actually doing a, a lot of um, uh, reading and uh, and uh, YouTube videos about uh, um, uh, childhood autism, about you know 
about the things they can do and all that. And uh, so it would, be, it would, I think, be a great advantage if I could get him into some sort of training skills uh, before he went to to school. Um, so that, uh, so that so that he doesn't have a life like I did. <laughs> That's a more normal life. But so yeah, hope, hopefully he can have a, an easier life. Just if if he gets some early intervention. But like I said, I haven't thought this through. I'm sort of just still mulling it about and trying to figure out how the hell I'm going to do it. Uh, uh. Hmm. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's often a delay, but not um, necessarily an impairment, you know. Hmm. Um, hmm. So, but yeah, absolutely. Kids always do good with with extra help or yeah, you know, they're, yeah. they're just that um, practicing in in intelligent ways. Absolutely, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that that will always be that you know that um, verbal communication is isn't there. But it mm -hmm. it the delay is is yeah way over. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. you you have. You have identified a possible scenario. So mm -hmm. That's that's helpful always. So mm -hmm. to give one some guideline of yeah. what to do with this, mm -hmm. and it's like uh, supporting but not panicking. In in that mm -hmm. case, I always say, yeah. you know, it's because yeah. it is, it's um, it's just a, a task rather than a, a verdict. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you know, so some people have set up the gift. I think that's probably stretching it a little bit, but uh, you know, uh, I mean, there's, you know, as far as I'm concerned, is is a is a perfect little human. He's, he's, he's really a lovely little little man. But uh, but you know, if he's going to get through life, uh, you know, a bit easier, you know, I'm really hoping some of these early. Well, it's a different yeah. way, isn't it? It's not a gift or a thing. Yeah. Right? It is, but yeah. it is a different yeah. way of being it's in different. the world, for sure. Yeah. I think, yeah. 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 And That's it's probably. if if one yeah. sees it Heideggerian, you know, the world yeah. the world is different to a brain like that with that yeah. kind of connectivity. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, we need both. Um, is mm -hmm. it better or worse? I don't know. But it is diff It yeah. is there yeah. is a different uh, difference in um priorities i guess a difference mm. of what comes easy what's not so easy mm. or and, and 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 as it is good for neurotypical brains to to train um deta you know a bit of of uh, stepping back and and um uh, and seeing it maybe um more neutrally i mean I, oh god i'm so that's so generalizing but yeah. you know, so there's certain things that could be trained in a, a neurodivergent brain uh, that mm -hmm. that cannot do so easily, and they they are mm -hmm. worth having so that we are yeah. as round as possible. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, it's just about knowing how to go about it, not to see it as a as a detriment, but to say, yeah. okay, so that's what you're good at. That's what you're not so good at. Let's help you with those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, kids can can learn stuff even if they they can't do it innately. Uh, that that's sort of my feeling. Of, yeah. Uh, but, um, but yeah, if, um, yeah, if if we can get some help early on, that would be, I think, I'm I'm certain it would be a great advantage to him because in, in every other way, he's completely utterly normal. Mm. Um, apart from all the screaming, he gets very very. Frustrated very very quickly, uh, so you know the, the old it's, it's the sort of it does tend to be does a lot of crying and, and or, or, or frustration if that things don't go his way in an instant sort of breakdown. Um, it, so you know, that, that's a little bit tiresome, but um, but you know yeah. Like with any kid, it's in the repetition. Of the of the because um, there's often a, um, more difficulty in a neurodivergent brain to to um, to learn 
in the background, like how to be with others um, mm. and, and impulse control. Um, a, mm. a neurotypical brain watches much more the social behavior of the people mm. around and, and kind of learns in the background like that. You might say something once and because they have watched uh, how others do it uh, like a hawk, they, you only need to say it once. That's, I think, a big difference between neurotypical brains and neurodivergent brains. Mm -hmm. So they, you say it once, that affirms what they have watched and observed already, and you're done. You know, don't hit Billy. We don't hit people, right? Mm -hmm. and, and Billy gets it and, and oh, doesn't do that okay. anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and, and little mm -hmm. Jack says, okay, don't hit Billy, but what about... <sighs> Elon, <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah. because it's very precise like that, oh, yeah. so it might, <laughs> it, might it might not be, uh, yeah. that, you know, it, so it doesn't make those generalizations so easily. So it mm. will stop, it will stop hitting Billy, but not Elon, and no one else either, because uh, you never said about Elon. Mm -hmm. So it, it's very, very particular mm -hmm. in that way. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. never be shy of repeating the, the thing because it doesn't learn by observation so well. So it, but it learns very well by verbal communication often. Mm -hmm. So you said, and now, now don't hit Elon either. And no, you know, and, and, and not, uh, mm -hmm. Xavier and not uh, whoever you know and and you you have to tick them off one by one until the generality is mm. is gotten mm. but before then it will be often one by one mm. and never be no we don't do that and just you know in the it's very mindful actually because it's it's really like being in a meditation and telling the mind in a very friendly way not to wander, you know. And it's like, mm. no, no, let's not do that. And it's very similar. It's, it's, it's always bringing back in this repetitive fashion, never being, why does he still do it? That frustration, you know, in a, in a meditation, we don't... I don't, I given up saying why does it still do it because <laughs> it won't stop so easily. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's very similar. It's a it's kind of a meditative process of this mm -hmm. forever repeti mm -hmm. repetitive saying. Mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, you you can do this. You don't need to scream. You can mm -hmm. do this. You don't need to mm -hmm. scream. You mm -hmm. can do this. You need you know that, that forever saying it, not thinking. Oh, that I already said it three times. It didn't mm. work, so I must mm. find something else. It's mm. it's always think of of repet repetitive stuff will mm. eventually do it, but it is you know many many times. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. uh, uh, Rupert, you, you you had issues with ADHD, didn't you? Did you mention that? Or? No. <clears throat> No, my uh, my problem was dyslexia, and and mm -hmm. I had a I had a difficult time at school because the dyslexia hadn't been invented when I was a child, mm -hmm. and I and the, so I was considered to be just thick, and uh, so I'm very perceptive of my teachers early on, <laughs> and uh, they had an interesting system which was to, in my primary school, which was to create a hierarchy in the classroom of viability. And you had a test at the end of every week. And depending on how well you did in the test, you, you sat closer or further away from the teacher. <laughs> so if you were good, you would move towards the front of the class. And if you were bad, you would move towards the back of the class. Great. Which was a brilliant idea. <laughs> um, <laughs> So you would distance your, as a teacher, you distance yourself from the more stupid children who obviously being further away could see mm. less well and hear less well. And mm -hmm. would, so the idea was, for me, was to try and keep off the back row of the class. Mm -hmm. That was like, if you were on the back row, that was, you were the stupid of the stupidest because it was a big class. Mm -hmm. So I used to teeter between the sort of relegation zone of between the bottom group the bottom the last line and the, and the 
next to last, like the penultimate. So I was, I was constantly yo-yoing um, in this relegation zone. And mm. I had a really quite a bad time because my father was um, the sort of opposite of dyslexic, and that he was very um, wordy and would do mm. the, the crossword before breakfast and, and had no concept of the um, somebody with an inability to be able to spell or use words, write poems, do anything that required um, written language. And so I was, I saw it was sort of, sort of drummed into me. And it was when I was listening to what you're saying about learning. I mean, it was, I had a, this problem is that I, I didn't get any better. I mean, it was, you could sort of learn things by rote eventually because we had a spelling test every week i remember and so but the spellings wouldn't stay you know you you'd remember them in order to get through the test but i, I for me one of the greatest inventions of all time is spell check because you know, i i just type away and mostly it, it recognizes um, what i'm meaning to say and it's just wonderful it's just a fantastic invention for for somebody yeah. with dyslexia. But the other thing I was interested in was what you were saying was that my daughter, both my children were dyslexic, but my daughter is severely dyslexic in that she has enormous difficulty. Um, I should have both do, but I think she's worse. And it's um, more unusual in girls than boys. But because we knew and could see very early on that there was a problem, we insisted on a, uh, an educational psychologist, which was difficult because they're, mm. I don't know what it's like now, probably worse, but at the time it was their local council funded and the local council don't want to fund them because they think they've got better things to do with their money. But we did get them assessed and she was assessed and had a, quite a high IQ, but an incredibly low reading and writing age, way below she. Her, her actual age and she said that that was the best thing that happened to her the fact that she had been diagnosed mm. and knew that there was a, she had something she had an ism and mm. because of that it made her life at school so much easier because somebody says you're stupid oh no i'm not stupid i'm dyslexic and, and so you have that sort of badge mm. of honor and it mm. deflects the criticism, deflects the the level which which I didn't have. You know? So I was mm. always thought, well, I never really thought I was stupid, but I thought that was it was clearly a problem, and that I was that I was different. Um, and I was so it was a fight to find my way through, and I hated school. I mean, all mm. sixteen years of my formal education. It was a, a real struggle. So I think that the fact that you can get a diagnosis early on and a recognition of what you are, mm. that you are, you have a badge, is a, enormously helpful. And mm. it's sort of just said, ah, right, okay, that's me. I'm, I'm. Whether that's for everybody, I don't know. But that was Phoebe. She was just, sort of, mm. she, she, she used to say to us afterwards, and she said it was just such a relief that she mm. had that diagnosis and yeah, it's, it's actually a two-way thing so some people sort of you know i don't like the labeling uh, you know because it sort of identifies them as something that they don't want to identify with and uh, on the other hand you have you know this this sort of certainty of, oh there is something there is something there which i can touch and feel or whatever that's real uh, a, a diagnosis of some sort uh, seems seems to be up that there's I've seen arguments both ways you know about people who don't want to be labelled and, and don't want a diagnosis and, and those who seek it out. Well, one of the ways I looked at it was that when I was teaching in uh, teaching design, we used to one of the areas that we dealt with was. Uh, designed for disabled for disability and I was quite keen to try <laughs> I was a one-man um, 
mission to change the word disability to otherwise abled. Mm -hmm. So you weren't disabled, but you were abled, but in a different way. And so that people, because whilst I was disabled in one way, I had abilities, which, which might have been as a consequence of, I don't know, but my, mm -hmm. I could do some things that other people couldn't do, like pretty mm -hmm. much everybody. So I was, I had abilities, but they were just different abilities. So I was keen to get the students to recognize that when we use the word disability, we automatically label everybody who isn't, who isn't the, you know, in the, in the norm. And because it's the word dis, it's, it means that the sort of without you have, you are missing something. And if you don't use that, if you say if it's otherwise abled, then there's a sense, oh, what's that ability? What what ability do you have? I mean, what, watching um, paraplegics play basketball, you know, is an extraordinary or, or rugby when they play rugby in wheelchairs. It's just extraordinary. And you think, well, you put put any anybody who isn't a train to do that and they would be hopeless they would be useless because they don't have that ability and so you think well you know that 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 way of looking at things means that the the labeling it sort of changes your attitude well i hope it was for my students i hope it sort of made them consider looking at what would otherwise be think of people with disabilities in a different way and, it, and it, it sort of comes down to this thing you were saying like label and it it's it's that label whereas I suppose with Phoebe and maybe Max as well it was the fact that their dad was was dyslexic had this 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 problem if it's a problem and 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 I was you know I was a university lecturer so I was you know they could see that it wasn't it wasn't detrimental or didn't need to be detrimental so that you could have a, you could do other things. It was a, it was a, a way out of this. And, and also there's a lot of other people, like famous people now, who recognize them with, with mm -hmm. dyslexia. It's not so long, it's not seen as being that problematic. And I think the same is true on the, on the Asperger's um, spectrum, um, that it, it, the recognition early on that, that you have particular abilities, but, but not other abilities, um, mm. uh, is more and more recognized as being something that can have advantages. Mm. It's a matter of stigma, really, isn't it? We're working away. Mm. We, we definitely have done away with the stigma, right in the Western world here, of dyslexia not one moment too soon and then we don't mind the label then it gets hel helpful because it opens doors of support and understanding isn't it and we're working at the neurodivergent labeling now but it's amazing you know like elon musk can come out and say i'm asperger's so and it, you know it clearly doesn't do anything about his um, success or popularity as dodgy as that is but you know okay it it it, it opens those doors of not having stigma attached. The label only gets a problem, I think, mainly if there's stigma attached. And and mm -hmm. at the moment, the pull is to just do away with that. I mean, my hubby, John, he is very dyslexic, has been has had the same experience as you, Rupert, totally mm -hmm. the same, hated school, hated his teachers. They really tortured him. And um, and he was in the same row, I guess, if not at very at, at the very back, you know, being a very mm. intelligent person. It's, it's very um, it's very painful. And um, and he got himself diagnosed in his 50s. Mm. He went to a dyslexic diagnosis on his own accord and had it in black and white that he's dy dyslexic and lots of praise of how he's compensating. I guess, you know, Rupert would know all about that. And it helped him in his 50s to find his self-esteem again. 
And we met sailing in Scotland. We met this guy, this couple in the next door, um, um, naughty cat. <laughs> and they were in their 80s. And, and fantastic sailors, they sailed this, this big boat in the most extraordinary fashion, being very, you know, they could only shuffle, really, but there mm. they were, <laughs> Sail, sailing their naughty cat, which is a completely enclosed sailboat, which, which you get very toasty inside. <laughs> It's our plan to have that in our 80s. <laughs> uh, it's like a living room on the water, really. <laughs> um, and and he had his own business, had run, had run his own business. Uh, so was a very successful man. And then suddenly his wife came out with it that all his life and still he felt a real uh, dunce, you know, really stupid because he couldn't spell. And, and not only had he lived a completely amazing life and built his own business and was very successful, and, um, and, uh, but in his 80s, he still felt so, um, you know, wouldn't disclose to anyone and felt stupid and, and lesser than the next person. And isn't that the saddest thing? Mm. So, you know, John and him had the, this amazing conversation, you know, a 60 year old with an 80 year old talking about dyslexia and that that doesn't mean anything about your intelligence. And, and it's uh, sad and glorious that that, that that happened, that conversation. But it's always about, can we just understand it and say, oh, that's how you are, you know, well, very mind. That's Dharma for me, to be able to, to turn towards that and say, oh, show me how you are, you know, because what do you bring to the world that no one else has rather than our normal, not Dharma life, which just uh, judges everyone and finds the faults, mm -hmm. huh? And uh, and it's, it's a it's a good opportunity to have these kids that clearly don't fit in the in the normal box, which is already a good start in a way <laughs> mm -hmm. for dharmic life mm -hmm. and for bringing out the dharma in the parents if they are in if they have any ability for it. I think because if you're a parent and you have never done any in exploration you i think you have a strong pull to 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 develop in that way because what will you do with that child you know you have to open your mind don't you i think it's such a strong mm. invitation because you love that being and you can't have it labeled and, and stigmatized like that you cannot you have to find the good bits and how to hold this why more wisely so it's a it's it's an opportunity even you know in any way and you are already in mm. such a good mm. state with it and a good opportunity mm. for you rupert to relive all that trauma huh and to do it differently see it from the uh, other uh, side uh yeah yeah uh yes I'm not sure I want to relive the trauma. <laughs> no, you didn't, though. You didn't relive it. You just said, okay, I know what that feels. I do something different. You did. Mm, absolutely. Not just reliving it forever, you know. Just That's pretty pointless. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that the, the, my, my recognition came because I was in education, because I was, and I was surrounded by people and writings and, and research which was which was involved in the educational issues and how how children learn and if i hadn't a bit then i think life would have been would have continued to be very very difficult um so it is about education it is about learning it is about understanding um from that comes the ability to to have the, the empathy to have the the, um, the the level of care 
I don't think I could have, it would have been difficult without it. Or maybe I, you know, you could be sympathetic, but without the, the understanding of what the issues are, then you can't really overcome it. You still think that there's a problem. Whereas I don't think there's a problem. I mean, I, I just think, well, this is just a different way of being. Wiring is different. And the more, the more I thought about it, the more I thought, well, everybody's wiring is different. There isn't a normal. There is just, there, is, you know, there are just variations on, a, on, a, on the way things, your bra brains are. I mean, you know, it's, it's highlighted now, isn't it? I mean, is, is Putin normal? I mean, is, is he, he's got a normal brain. You think, well, uh, he's, he's a leader of one of the world's largest countries and, and appears to be bonkers. But people who talk to him say, oh, no, he's, he's rational. He thinks he's right. He's, he's rational. You think, well, there's got to be wiring that's very different there. And I, all those people who vote for Trump, you know, you think, on the, on the Brexit. I mean, it, it's all about levels of uh, of differences in the way people's brains work rather than they're being normal and then you know, this is dyslexic or that's Asperger's or whatever. It just, it's just it seems to be a range. And the more extreme you get on that range, then it becomes an ism. You know, it becomes something which is identifiable. But don't you think that, um, I mean, it seems to me that, that our system allows uh, brains who have a definite empathy bypass um, to get to the top levels of power. Ah. They will, they will have the same yes, yeah. am, am, ambition as others to be strong and powerful. And if we look at that strata, they have this, this empathy bypass in, 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 in a very strong mm -hmm. way. You know? So it seems to help to have that phenomenon uh, when you climb up, because you can just not care, basically. It, yeah. you, you, it allows you not, you're not inhibited by uh, thoughts and feelings of welfare for your compatriots. <laughs> you know, you, the, the, that seems to me that we see them in that top layer. You know, the, there is a similarity. And uh, the, the problem is that, that um, others don't, well, but we don't, I think uh, the neurotypicals with the empathy don't take that seriously enough. They think, well, surely no one is so. You know, we said, so, no, no, Putin, he's not stupid. He won't do that, you know, mm -hmm. said the neurotypical with the empathy. Because it would be unfathomable for, for a, a brain with, uh, endowed with empathy to do certain things. And uh, so we we can't almost believe it because it's so ingrained, I think. And then, hang on, absolutely did so. It wasn't inhibited whatsoever. Has, uh, has a, 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 a surrounded themselves with people who have similar bypasses and therefore no one's checking anymore and says, Ah, but we don't do that, you know. And so it seems to me, I don't know, as I know, the the Hitlers, the Putins, the Musks, the 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 Trumps, the the there's a there's <laughs> this top layer. They they go up there because I think it is enhancing their power, their their will to power. Uh, they don't have to take care of anyone else. Uh, yeah, no, you're right, of course. Yes, yeah. So psychopathy is, is, is a, I guess, a form of you know, neurodivergence. Um, but so, so and, and, you know, the, this lack of empathy is, is, you know, quite common in politics. You know, spent, what, what? 10 years working for the Labour Party and God knows how many years in, in other parties. Um, and, and, and certainly, you know, in the main, you, you come across, you know, pretty normal good people uh, in Parliament. Um, 
but you know there are people who just seem to, to, to have this deadness, this 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 ruthlessness, this, this willingness to, to say and do anything and just have no conscience whatsoever or or or, or, or no no caring about about uh, about about consequences to other people, and and, the, and those those people are humans. And, uh, uh, I guess you know they're the sorts of people who you know people like us would say would be less than human because they lack that essential element of empathy, which I guess we might agree makes somebody human. Mm, that's a big statement. Yeah, cool. Does it make us human to? Oh, uh, sorry, I've got to open the door. My daughter's just got in from the uh, airport. Be back oh. in a <laughs> You've got to give her a hug too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, 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 thanks for reminding me. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hmm. Why do we vote for these people? Huh? Isn't that amazing? There's a we're mesmerized by. By that quality, we don't we don't say. Hang on a minute. Look at um, Boris. He has that quality of just not giving a damn about anyone else, and 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 we we think that we have some. We go for someone like that. I read in one an article about um, somebody was being interviewed about Boris and asked whether well, they were going to vote. And they said, oh, I vote for Boris because he's charismatic. And I thought, ah, that, that's something which I, and he is, he, he does have, I'm not quite sure what charisma is, but he has a, there's a theatrical element to him that is engaging and I think it's the same with Trump in that there's a somebody who can go and stand on a stage and talk for two hours it's, it's a bit like a stand-up comedian you know it's a it's a it's quite something to be able to do you know to be able to engage an audience um and I I you compare that with, I'm sorry, Gary, we're just talking about. Uh, yeah, I caught everything I've had. All right. Right. All right. <laughs> you took us oh. with you. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't miss a beat. Yeah. <laughs> so, I was thinking that if you're, um, if it's about charisma and it's about your ability you know, to be able to present and to, to have other engage with you or to be able to engage with people that's a sort of different from a lack of empathy isn't it you, the, because how is it possible to be charismatic and have an audience you know, take an audience with you and yet have no apparently no empathy it's, it's it seems sort of contradictory well, it's I, a I Manipulation. I mean, I mean psychopaths. That, that's what they're good at. Is, is you know. I mean, I think they can they can read social situations, but they just don't care about the actual consequences of, of their actions. So that, that they they can you know, they can read sociality. They can sort of you know read relationships, but then you know what they say and do is is not uh, is not uh, moderated by, by 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 any feelings of you know consequences or or, or things like that i mean keep a person like uh, you know trump or or or, or hitler or, or people like that who can preach hatred i mean hatred people love hatred it's really easy to hate it's just so easy uh, and and uh, and you know if, if you're trying to sort of you know, put compassion in, in competition with hatred, 
you know, I think hatred is always going to win because it's easy. It's really easy. Being compassionate is hard. We've got to actually try. We've got to engage cognition to some degree. Um, we've got to, to, to engage you know, some sort of understanding. Whereas with hatred, you don't have to do that. It's, you, you can be lazy, you know, and and uh, and, and that, that, that's 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 what Brexit was all about. It was about hatred. It wasn't about you know um, anything else that I could see anywhere. But, you know, I mean, the, 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 you know, obviously it's trying to exploit nationalism, trying to exploit uh, the so-called racism, um, and uh, these sorts of things. But those things are so easy to whip up, so easy. And uh, and to try to sort of you know, argue the opposite is just much more difficult than it is to, to sort of you know, um, to try and pull people along under the banner of some sort of hatred. It's a lot easier because you don't have to think, you don't have to think as much because you're not thinking, you're not using your cognition, you're just using your emotions or some sort of you know, your, your, your reactive part of your, your, your brain. And that's why it's so easy, I think, but for these uh, psychopaths to, to get people to follow us. Because in, in the main, people don't like to think. You know, if they can be pulled along by emotion, it's, that's easy. Right? They don't, and uh, it's just easy to hate, a lot easier to hate than it is to, to love or to be compassionate. I think, I think that's a good that's a very good point I, I i think perhaps though with johnson our our, our lovely prime minister he is he's, he's he's not he's not hateful in mm -hmm. he is he's actually sort of quite liberal but i i think there is this thing about his one thing you were saying that he, the consequences of actions he doesn't think those through mm. And the other, but the other one is that seen from my, I suppose my point at the beginning of this was why do people vote for him? And it was what you, I think what you were saying about, about emotion. It's a more an emotional response because he is charismatic, whatever charis, whatever that means on how you, I don't know, you know how you would bottle it, but be, because he is charismatic, the, the people have an emotional response to him which they don't need to think through, it's just automatic. Because mm. this man is a charismatic figure, I, I can vote for him. And it, I can really forget about anything else. He's just, I just, I, I, I have an emotional, positive emotional response to this person. Which is why the leader of the opposition, Keir Starmer, is a very clever chap, but he, he is not charismatic. He is not. He doesn't. He doesn't come across as somebody who could in, engage a group of an audience for two hours on stage. You know, you'd get very bored because he doesn't. Mm -hmm. He lacks that. So you don't have an immediate emotional response to him. You have to think it through. You have to think, oh, well, or you just think, well, he's he's better than the other chap. But it's interesting. I think. It's interesting that that is what I, you know. I'm thinking about why people vote, and because like you cannot imagine Johnson getting to a position that he is, other than mm -hmm. having people emotionally find him a pleasant man. It's it's very difficult because nothing he does, mm -hmm. <laughs> nothing he actually does, would make you vote for him. I mean, mm -hmm. People don't tend to vote for liars who get sacked from their jobs. You, know, mm -hmm. you think that you think, well, no, I, I'm probably not a man to vote. Mm -hmm. But he's, but his, his isn't. He's not driven by hate. So that's not how he. Well, although he, I a think lot, probably more an opportunist. Um, yes, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, he he was against racism. So, so to, to to begin with, I think it was only after the vote did it that he basically said, "Okay, I'll go along with it, and uh, let, let's get get going." And he only went. He only said that because that's the only way he was going to get the votes to become prime minister. Well, he he, he did. Yes, I mean, uh, he he's always seen Europe as 
a way, yes, I think there is a sort of hatred there. To, well, not, hate is very strong, but, but it was a, by having an, a, a negative attitude towards Europe was a decision he made early on in his journalism in order to become, be controversial, in order to mm. become published. But yes, I don't think he really believed it. I mean, he wrote, famously wrote two essays before uh, he decided which way he was going to go. One praising Europe and one praising leaving Europe. And, and the, he just wrote both of them. So he, he was quite intellectually, you know, I could go either way. He then decided mm -hmm. that it would be a beneficial for him after there was a, the, the release of the referendum. It would be... Yeah beneficial for him to be the only leading politician to support Brexit and that's what he did he did it not because he felt it was the right thing to do but it was a good self-promotion and why well, was that though because I think Gary you really you, you nailed it for me I, I'm really that's mm -hmm. with the hatred I think we can the, 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 the masses can so much easier uh, rally behind a yeah. hatred, even mm -hmm. if it's a smaller hatred like Europe, yeah. you know, no one is mm -hmm. going for the French in a, in a very uh, obvious way, but that well, hatred, everybody hates the French. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, it, it has tapped into the well of hatred when the Brexit thing was in full flow. Mm -hmm. And that's how you rally the troops, don't you? That's when, yep. when a, 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 a movement gets power. I, I think oh, there is this conversation between Hariri, Yuval, you know, the sapiens guy, mm -hmm. and Sandel, the merit guy. So Sandel is this uh, philosopher that says meritocracy is uh, in, uh, mm. is at the root of the of the social um, disintegration, the the inequality basically, uh, and uh, and he has this discussion with Hariri, and it's like when I first heard it, I thought Hariri is not getting Sandel's point at all. What's wrong with him? He usually gets everything, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like he just disengages with it. He doesn't even want to talk about it. And first I was really disappointed. And then I listened again and say, oh, my God, you know, it's absolutely Hariri wins hands down for him. The merit stuff, that's a little sugar cake. Uh, you know, icing on the cake. It really, mm. world politically, doesn't matter. And he says a very interesting thing. He says, if it were that the masses are disgruntled and vote for a Trump or, or, or for Brexit or so, because they feel that uh, the, the society is too in, uh, unequal and that meritocracy is just, uh, it doesn't really happen. Why does it not turn up in the big discussions of, uh, of the society? And it doesn't turn up. It really yeah. hardly features. Mm -hmm. But what features is the hatred of immigrants, the hatred of homosexuals, the mm -hmm. hatred of anyone who gives you a reason to uh, to feel them as, as unusual and, and not normal and, and all that. That features, he says, in the narrative of the popul populist movements. There's always that hatred. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. uh, you, you, get, uh, you don't go absolutely in the same direction. And he says, so that is what matters, what you can um, mobilize in, in the mass of the people. And that is about hatred, not about inequality. Mm -hmm. And that, it's, it's, it's just made it so much clearer for me that mm -hmm. you pointed it out so clearly, mm -hmm. Gary, that it is what, it's such an easy feeling. We hate mm -hmm. so easily, don't we? This is oh, so yeah. well said. And, and, it's, and we love to hate, we just, oh, yeah. It, it, it's such a good instant release. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. even if we don't, you know, the main populace doesn't go about with a hatchet and murders people, only a few do. Um, so we kind of have that kind of, you know, and there's only a few uh, suicide bombers or people who kill people in America with machine guns or, uh, or, or it, it's, it, it's relatively a few who take a weapon and do that. Sometimes it really escalates like Putin, you know, that's a good hatred story. Mm -hmm. But the Russians yeah. love to hate too, and, mm -hmm. and therefore they're behind him. And, yeah. and even a Boris, who himself, I think, is not a hater, has seen that his only way up the ladder to power was to engage with a hatred. Yeah. Not yeah, with yeah. an inequality, mm -hmm. which is what we should really be worried about, but with a hatred. These mm -hmm. Europeans that really are not with us, that get it so wrong, shall we hate them a little? Oh, yes, that gets mm -hmm. us all solidarity. You know? oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Well, the same thing happened in Ukraine. I mean, Ukraine was, you know, they weren't in a good state before. No, they weren't. I mean, I mean, you can't say that they were doing well, as political, political and socially. I mean. Yeah, but yeah. Bloody, they were a bloody mess. Uh, but, you know, the Russians come and where? They're united. You know, they've got a, they've got a common hatred. Yes. Um, and and, and uh, that, you know, instant sort of solidarity. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a, a, a great unifying Mm -hmm. Whereas yeah. positive, positive visions are much, much harder to sell, much, much harder to, to get people emotionally engaged with something, some positive vision for, for progress or, or for, for human advancement. You can't sell that. Nobody's going to get uh, you know, sort of emotionally triggered by that. Uh, yeah. but, but, but a little bit of hatred you know, here and there you know that that's that's what that's what gets votes. Like yeah, Rupert I'm, I'm, says, it's too complicated, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not, same. I'm not, I'm not quite <laughs> sure about that. I mean, I think you know, your country is being invaded. It, you don't need to hate the person who's doing it, and I'm not sure that that's the case. That you would. I mean, I, I, it's never happened to me, but you'd, you'd probably fight but not necessarily want to kill somebody who you knew was up until a week ago, you considered to be a relative, a brother, you know, which is what apparently the, the relationship between Ukrainians and Russians was. So, you know, I, I'm not sure that that, it, it, it can, I think you're, there's definitely right. There's def, definitely that hatred is a, a big driver, but I'm not sure it's, it's the only thing here that that is, um, you know, that that, that that is the importance. And it comes out. I was saying before that the, you know, the, 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 this tiny little article just said, "Why would you vote for Boris?" And said, "Because he's charismatic." And and that so there is a difference there. That's not because he, he inspires hatred, but because he has a particular characteristic so and i'm not i mean i, I have no idea but that, you, know, you saw those shots of putin in, in a big stadium full of people who were mm. and apparently they'd be you know, some of them have been made to go there and the things and you read these popularity polls that's not hatred against the ukrainians that the russians have i don't think it's it's a it's a i don't know whether it's a belief in his in, in him, but it, it's certainly some level of belief that they have that what he's saying is true, that, they're, that these are Nazis in Ukraine and that, that we need to um, uh, sort this out. And I, so I, I, whilst I agree that hatred is a, is a big driver for many people, I'm not sure it's, it's sort of universal here. I think there are other things mm. at play. Yeah. Well, I think hatred in, in, in the case of the Russians, it, 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 it's more of an us and them. I mean, I mean, Russians have sort of been sort of, you know, fed sort of a, a very narrow propaganda for, you know, 20 or, 20, 20 or more years. 
um, and you know, all, all directed to, to to some sort of um, scenario where you know the West is always against us. The West always wants to sort of put us down. The West wants to stop Russia rising to where it should be. You know, once we are great, now we are now, now we're sort of not, and, it, and it's all the West's fault. Uh, I think there is hatred, a kind of hatred. I, I kind of that, that's, that's against the West, the West, but the Ukrainians aren't the West, are they? I mean, they. Uh, well, well, no, but they they were part of the Soviet Empire. They, and that that is and that is the, the birthplace of Russia is is key. That you know, it's, Kiev is 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 a you know, very important place in Russian history. Uh, and Ukraine has always been sort of Russia's backyard. It's been you know, that, that's it's been considered part of the the, 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 the domain of, of Russia, even though it might necessarily have been considered a country. And it was only really established as a, as a nation, you know, you know, thirty years ago. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not not a despite what any Ukrainian might say. It's it's a pretty recent thing for, for, for Ukraine to, to have any sort of true independence as, as, a, as a nation state, because up until 30 years ago, it was just a, an appendage of, 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 of the Russian Empire. Yeah, indeed, yeah. Uh, so anyway. I... But yeah, you know, I think, it, I don't know whether you could call you know, what Russians feel as, as hatred, but I, you know, I think there's an element of sort of grievance, if you can call that a form of hatred, grievance towards the West that you know that the, the Soviet Empire was destroyed, um, you know, and, and yeah, so, so you know, I think I think grievance could be sort of a, a kind of hate. Yeah, I yeah, maybe. Yeah, well, that, that's certainly true with Brexit as well. I mean, mm. whether it's a hatred towards Europeans, but certainly a a grievance felt that mm. you know we're giving them money and mm. we don't get anything in return mm. i mean I, hatred is a strong word and you know we mm. don't hate the french i guess but i think as a as an orientation you know hatred hatred like i kill you is the 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 strongest manifestation but this kind of uh, we against you, this kind yeah. of uh, and and grievances in there, and you done us wrong, or you're always putting us down, or you me versus you, that kind of thing. You know, if we I, I just parcel it up in different shades of hatred, and sometimes it's more mm -hmm. subtle than others. But for as a, as an orientation, I think it works for me, and, and it doesn't mean that it is always you know absolutely. Uh, red hot there mm. can be a bit of simmering going on but as an orientation i think th that seems to work and and there seems to be a, a, that that's what i now understand better in Har harari's um argumentation that that seems to be in the history of mankind the the, the uh, such a motivation that rather than, you know, we have to work hard at equality and democracy and giving everyone that it's always comes it's and it's never safe in a way, as we now know, it's always tentative. It's always like, OK, if we have enough intelligent, well-meaning people, uh, then then we might just about pull it off. And then it goes through a decline because everyone is either complacent or has other ideas. And at the moment, we I think as a as a world, we really um, shaky again. You know, it's not that the West and every, everyone is just working in one direction. Not at all, is it? It's just getting more tentative again. What this kind of common so the, the, the solidarity and equality, if that is still in everyone's interest. I don't think it, it that's very much now questioned by, by the circumstances and information age and all that. Could, could you not argue, as I'm going to, 
that. But justice, fairness, is on the same spectrum as grievance and hatred. Mm. And, and that we're only actually talking about a, a position on that spectrum. Because mm -hmm. hatred, grievance, grievance is a sort of, um, it's a grievance because things aren't fair, mm. that I'm giving you something and I'm not getting anything back. And that, that's about justice and fairness. And that's about equality. So I, I just wonder whether actually that there, there's maybe not two different ways of looking at it, but they're, they're, they're different ends of a spectrum and that it's a more because the russians you suspect i don't god no, i don't i don't know any russians and i but i suspect that they're not all you know without thinking their thinking their belief is that as you were saying that there's a grievance here and that grievance is that, 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 that this isn't fair this is not reasonable and it should be fairer. It should be that we have this bit of the world, Kiev and Odessa are Russian, and Crimea is Russian. So that's the fair way of looking at it. So, it, so their hatred, what is apparent hatred, is about, from their perspective, about fairness, about justice, and about equality. This is what we should have. But we see it as... Um, as, as, as hatred, why else would you go and, and, and kill people? And obviously there's a, there's a big propaganda thing in there about actually if they saw exactly what was happening, would they, you know, would they still support it? But the, but the position is, the position that they have as, as Russians is that it's, it's not, it's a grievance, but the grievance is based on, on the, a level of of, of a perceived fairness or injustice 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 yeah yeah so it's a lack of justice mm. so justice on one end fairness equality on one end and, and hatred being the other well, end not necessarily it. not necessarily equality well i'm, I'm just putting those mm. words in to but, say but that they could be honest yeah, yeah you know that, that's all I'm, that's all i'm thinking no, I well, think I, that I think that so. I don't agree with that. No, but well, okay. go <laughs> Gary first. <laughs> no, I, I think well, concepts of of equality. I, I uh, no, I don't think that's a cause of conflict. Um, what what is the cause of conflict is a disparity in in division of resources in a lot of cases, or or division of some sort of asset or whatever. Uh, it, it's never actually you know. We are not equal, but you know this is not fair. Um, you know, you got more than me, or I got more than you. So, it, it, even though that feels like you know people looking for for equality, it's it's often the yeah the disparity is is more the problem than than, than anything else. You, you, you've probably seen those experiments on primates where they sort of give. Um, you know, one 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 prime out that they'll, they'll they'll give a piece of carrot. They'll give another. They'll give a, a grape to another primate, and uh, that'll cause the the, the, the primate that got the carrot to get, to really freak out and sort of say, "Hey, why did he get the grape? I should get a grape too, because the grapes are you know they're nice." Uh, and uh, you know, th th this sort of innate sort of sense of justice it seems to be something that primates do. Um, uh, well, no, maybe not. Uh, I think other other mammals might do that too. I think dogs might do that a little bit, but not not nearly to the same extent as primates. You know, this sense of fairness uh, and uh, justice, injustice, and uh, why did why did that that uh, monkey get something better than I got? Um, and and that, that will cause a conflict. Whereas to give, give them both the same thing, give them both a grape, they'll both be happy. Or give them both a carrot, they'll both be happy. So it's not about what you actually give to them, but the fact that there is a disparity between between what, what has been given. For me, they are different polarities. It's not hatred and 
equality on one on one of the, the, the spectrums. There are two different spectrums of, if you would say one spectrum is supremacy and equality. And so where, where do you do, do place yourself there? And one is hatred and empathy perhaps. And then they have their interactions, but there isn't equality and hatred on, on I can't get that together in my mind. Mm -hmm. Because they, they, you know what what do you use as your content for the hatred? Uh, you can use something on the spectrum of empathy and supremacy. You know, Elon Musk can hate to pay taxes because you know extortionist nations nation states uh, you know they they should just go away and um leave him alone because it's all mine thank you very much <laughs> mm -hmm. um so that's on the on the, the the spectrum is on i'm the best and equality everyone we are here to share so and, and he's not into that really um but a hatred is 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 on the on the polarity with empathy. So how do you go about it? And that's where you see a, a Trump uh, going about with a, the, the hate Trump uh, doing really well. You know, let's hate the Mexicans coming over the border. That was fantastic, wasn't it? I mean, that was such a good move in his success story. So he is charismatic too. You, there's enough people who want to listen to him for two hours in the same way as Boris is. But that's, so that's a, a yet another feature. Are you charismatic? Do you have a content of a message of hatred against something? And then are you into not sharing very much? And if you have all those dials over very good charisma, very good hate story and not sharing. So I, I'm very high on the supremacy. I'm just better than all you losers. Then you make a really good dictator. I think, you know. <laughs> but they are, they are for me, just different polarity lines. I think I, I would agree if you use the word hatred, but if you use the word grievance, then I'm, I'm not so sure. So the difference between Trump, maybe because he inspires hatred, but Boris inspiring grievance, then I think grievance, if you have a grievance, what does it mean? There must be something you have a grievance against. It's like, it's because things are not as they should be. And that as they should be, I would suggest is more like justice. Anyway, um, but I would agree that, that it's not. It's not. You populate the grievance with one of the other things, yeah. you know, yeah, like fairness on, yeah, and yeah. and all that. Yeah, I see. So it's yeah. That's all I'm thinking. And there might be yeah, because he, he Musk's grievance against paying taxes is not presumably about fairness. I, got, I don't know what it's about. I mean, it's obviously, well, I, maybe, I maybe, maybe it's a correct. rational thing. Elon Musk has actually pays a lot of tax. I think probably I, what you're I thinking of is, is Google, Facebook, and, and, and those tech companies. Um, Elon Musk is actually probably, you know, he's, he's on the left. And uh, he's actually paid a huge amount of tax uh, just, right. just uh, last year, massive amount of tax. And they, I, but anyway, but yeah, I, I know the point. It's uh, you know, basically billionaires you know, not paying their fair share, uh, and uh, this is the source of grievance. Um, you know, this is this is not fair that they should pay more tax, uh, and they're not paying more tax. They're getting away with. It. Uh, why should they get away? With it? This is a grievance, and this is a source of, of hatred towards towards uh, uh, towards. Billionaires. I mean, I mean, grievance. It must be. It must be a. There must be an element of hate within that grievance, and with that, with, within that injustice, because you you have a grievance, you 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 
objectify something as, as, a, as a source of, of hatred or as the object of a, of, of a, of a hatred, whether that be a person, a group, or, or you know, or society. Yeah, well, I'm going to have to think about that now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also, well, I, I have, I'm going to have to go because my, mm -hmm. um, I promised my daughter I'd go and help mend her house today. So uh, you're mending a house. <laughs> that sounds. Hey, <laughs> you're starting you late, darling. <laughs> uh, she has. Well, she's moved in recently, and she's. She's. Uh, there are some things that she. It's, it's very good. I'm <coughs> she only needs me to show her something, and, and then she'll just do it. But uh, but she needs needs me to show something. So oh, there, in fact, there are two two bits of mending I have to do. <coughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds amazing. You're yeah. taking care of your kids. <laughs> oh, a heart cool. Take it's heart cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's sane isn't it that you know, there's a lot of insanity going on in the world and and that is sane to help you get out. <laughs> i like it's quite, that it's quite that's funny very empathic <laughs> they're very precious and particularly a partner is very precious about the house and yesterday i mean one of the things i got fixed is that there's a panel on the landing where the plaster is just not great and i and, she, and they're trying to make it nice you know, because i think i paint it look good and i said oh, pushing it. And i said well you could just live with it said, oh no no because it's not smooth it's not right so i said well okay we can just fix. and i was going around i was just start hammering it and bits were falling off and they were, oh well no look it's a mess and I was, yeah well you know it's plaster you know everything's fixed. <laughs> but there's this sort of sense of oh you know <laughs> Why are you going to make a mess if you're going to fix things? And, and uh, oh, no, no, just keep it, do it nicely. <laughs> Persuaded. <Yes. laughs> ah, sometimes you just got to make a mess. Uh, well, that's that's, that's a, a common political uh, thing that yes, used to be yeah. said, which, you know, to, to, to make omelets, you've got to crack eggs. Yeah, you've got to crack you know? eggs. Yeah. <laughs> make a mess. Egg, that's it. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's because they've sort of grown up in. Well, not Phoebe has, but her partner has. It's it, it, new builds. You know, the idea you go into a thing that's perfect, it's it's mm. pristine, and you don't have to do anything. You just live in it, you know. And then you, you know, go somewhere else. And now they've bought this property, which is old and needs an awful lot of work. And mm. you know, as you say, you've got to make a bit of a mess if you're gonna. <laughs> but he'd yeah. prefer if it wasn't. He'd prefer if it was just. Uh, <laughs> I didn't see the mess. I just you can make the mess, but don't let me see it. Just <laughs> oh, well, you will teach them some, huh? You will you will introduce them into <laughs> yes. the, introduce the into messiness the of, of the <laughs> of making a mess and not freaking. <laughs> well, it's amazing oh. how our conversations start, and I have no idea where they're going. But so, yeah. yes, but and I, I keep seeing these things pop up about uh, new people uh, coming and. Um, subscribing. And oh yeah, yeah that's yeah. bizarre. <laughs> but, but, you know, they come out of nowhere. I'm not yeah. encouraging them. Uh, <laughs> no, they should be discouraged. This is yeah, really. It is what it is. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should invite them all to. Uh, yeah, to, uh, yeah. Let's have a yeah. group session. Well, this, this, is, this is number forty, by the way. This is number forty. Right. Well. Wow. Ah. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> You've yeah, well, done me good. You've done me good. It's lovely to see you again. And mm. yeah, I hope things work out for uh, you, Gary. And I hope yeah. you, if you have to go to Australia, you enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, I'll catch you all. Yeah. Okay. Catch you. Bye. See you later. Bye bye. 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 See, see you. Yeah. <laughs>